that he would never leave you, nor will he forsake you, but lo, he'll be with you always, even until the ends of this earth. In other words, he's right or die, but he'll get up on everyone in the building to stand that's able to stand so men stay here at all nations church clap your hands we have come into this house gathered together in his name to worship him hallelujah everybody say we have come into this house we have come into this house Everybody clap your hands and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate. Concentrate and worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So forget about yourself. Worship Christ. And word of I come to clap my hands and worship him all in long in my spirit in my heart worship him say worship him all day long worship him say take it home worship him worship him cry our Lord hands all over the sanctuary of Alaska. Come on, continue to praise him. Continue to give him praise. Did we come to lift him up this morning? Did we come to glorify his name? Is anybody happy, glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? He is a great God. He is a holy God. He is a righteous God. And we come to lift him up and glorify his holy name. My Bible tells me to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. It is prayer time. Glorious Father, we come to you just thanking you for another day of grace, another day of mercy, another day of just being able to say thank you. For you are Alpha and you are Omega. You are the beginning and the end. We come to glorify you and lift you up because you are everything to us, O oh God. You are the Holy One of Israel. We come to praise your name because you are Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the everlasting God. We are nothing without you, for in you we live and move 
and we have our beings. And we come to praise your name today. We come to say yes to your will. We come to say thank you for the things that you're doing for us. We come to lift up your name. For you said if I'll be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto thee. So we come to lift you up and glorify you and thank you. Thank you for the people that are gathered here today. Those that are on their way, oh God, we pray for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So Lord, be in the service on today. Be our invited guests. Move according to your will in, in Jesus' name. Look on the sick and the shut in. For you were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace is upon them. And by your stripes, we are healed today. So remember Mother Roland today. Remember Sister Coleman today. Remember those that we don't even know about today. Oh God, you know all about them in the name of Jesus. For Lord, you took it to the cross and you left it there. And now we thank you, dear Lord, for our pastor, our sister pastor. We thank you for the first lady. We thank you for the elders and the ministers, oh God. We pray for the deacons and the mothers, oh God. We pray for the lay members in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the musicians, oh God. Oh God, you know everything about us. For Lord, you know the things that we have and that we don't have. But you've blessed us, oh God, and we thank you. Thank you for a roof over our head. Thank you for clothing on our back. Thank you for the jobs that we have, the cars that we drive. We thank you for so much that you have given us, Lord. But Lord, I thank you for forgiving us for sin and shame. And I ask, oh God, that you remember us on today. And God, that you would get the glory. We thank you for all these things according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts 7 and 8. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. May the Lord bless the word. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We'll give God the praise on this morning. Come on, give him the glory. Come on, give God the praise. Give him the honor. Come and worship him today. Magnify the Lord in the beauty of holiness because God is good and greatly to be praised. Come on, church. Give God the praise on this morning. Hallelujah is the highest praise. So worship him this day. Magnify him. Honor him. Exalt him in the beauty of holiness. Lord, we thank God for allowing us to see another day of grace. We could have been in the best funeral home in the world, but thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah to his name. We thank the Lord for allowing us to come in today, and we welcome you to, to our Men's Day celebration. Amen. Praise God. For the men are in charge all day long. Praise the Lord. And we're going to sing you happy today, man. Praise God. I'm Deacon Howard Anderson, and I'd like to introduce the order of our service. Our theme for today is Time Out and the Righteous Judge, coming from the book of St. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses one and two. And the balance of our program shall go in this particular order. We shall immediately have our praise and our worship service led by the praise team. And then a welcome shall come from Brother Myron Smith. We believe shall be presided over by the pulpit, and Deacon Calvin Martin will give us a five minute expressions. Following will be the music department. We shall receive the tithe and offerings, observations, and then the men's chorus will bless you with a song. Amen? Praise God. The introduction of speakers shall done, be done by Elder Michael I'm sorry, Elder Ataska Hollins, Jr. 
then the speaker. Following will be discipleship. The doors of the church shall be opened. And then the benediction. So at this time, if God has given you the ability and the strength to stand and the desire, please stand as we go forth in our praise and our worship service. Praise the Lord. Come on, you can put your hands together. Come on, if you really love him, put your hands together. I really love
Washington that God's a healer, God's a deliverer. All you got to do is look at Sister Lisa Duarte back there. Last week her, her son got hit by a car. He's in ICU, but he walked out of the hospital last week. God is a good God. He's a good father. Listen to this. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are, and I am loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good father. Who you are. That's who you are. Who you are. And I'm loved. That's who I am. That's who I am. Can you lift up your hands high and declare, you're a good, good father. Who you are, that's who you are, say. Everybody say, that's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who we are. That's who I am. That's who I am. Listen, you are perfect in all. You are perfect. Can you wave your hands and declare? Perfect in all of the ways. Yeah, yes, you are perfect in all of the ways. To us. Yeah. Let's say it again. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Can you clap your hands all over the place and say? Some water. 
who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Raise your hands high and say you are perfect. You are to about three people and tell your neighbor, don't worry about it, God's in control. Walk to three people who aren't sitting or standing next to you. Tell God is in control. God's got it. Good, good father. Come on, hug three people. Tell them God's got it under control. Your finances, your health. And I'm loved by you. Say, that's who you are. That's who I am.
we'd like to welcome you. Feel free to move as the Spirit of the Lord have you to move. And again, we welcome you once where no one stands alone. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise God. How many know the devil's a liar? Everybody stand on your feet. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to disrupt the service. But the devil's a liar. How many know the devil's a liar? There's healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance. There is joy in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and begin to confuse the devil. And clap your hands and pray the Lord. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. God is a healer. He's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. He prayed when you're hungry. He's the water when you're thirsty. He's the doctor in the sick room. He's the lawyer in the courtroom. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. Say to we bind you. Say to get out of here. We bind you now. Get out of here. You can't stay. We are Holy Ghost filled in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and praise Him. Put your hands together and let's hear heaven. Let heaven hear you. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on, praise Him. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, we love you. Come on, open up your mouth and shout, Lord, we praise you right now. We're healed. We're delivered. We're set free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, shout the name of Jesus. Take your seats if you can, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is in this place. His presence all over this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, the pulpit will preside over our statement of faith, and then following, Deacon Calvin Martin is coming forth with the expressions. Amen? Praise the Lord. Oh, it's hot up in here. Oh, come on, just stand on your feet. We're going to do our statement of faith, which is found on the inside cover of our program. Amen, amen, amen. We know God is a healer. Hallelujah. We know God's already got it in control. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Our statement of faith is found on the inside cover of our program. I read the part of the leader, and you read the part of the congregation. Our belief concerning the Bible. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning the church. Our belief concerning sin. Our belief concerning salvation. Our 
our belief concerning Christ. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. Our belief concerning sanctification. And all that believe respond by saying, Amen. Well, saints, y'all got to praise God for just one minute. Amen. Because you know God is good. God can heal anything or anybody he wants to whenever he wants to. Amen. God is just that good. Amen. Praise God. I know that we are praising God today and I'm looking at my brother over there. I seen him out yesterday and I look at him now. God is God is fixing him right now. God is fixing him up right now. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. I'm Deacon Calvin Martin and I'm here to give you a one minute expression. Amen. Amen. Our theme today is time out and the righteous judge. Amen. Now, those scriptures was found in Matthew chapter 7, 1 and 2, and I did a little research on that. And if you read that from verses, you'll, you'll see it says, do not judge, amen, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, what I was curious about, about was measure. Now, when you're talking about the measure, what is they talking about when you're saying measure? All right, I got the answer. <laughs> Y'all know I looked it up, amen. <laughs> With what measure of faith? It came out of Romans 12 and 3. In the English Standard Version of the Bible, Romans 12, 3 says, For by grace given to me, I say to any everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. So the measure of faith is what God assigned, right? The New American Standard Bible, King James Version of faith, well, of faith, while measure of faith is present as the faith God has distributed to each of you in the New International Version of faith God has given us in the New Living Translation. Right away, two factors are apparent about the measure of faith. First, it is the standard by which we correctly appraise ourselves. The second is the meter out by God because each believer receives the measure of faith by God anointing. We are privileged from thinking of ourselves more highly than others. I just want to, you know, we can go around and around about judging people and what we should do and what we shouldn't do. But, you know, when you look at it, I just I got a little story. Everybody in here pretty much is a uh, mother, father, grandparent, auntie, or uncle, or some kind of right. way. Now, if you think about it, when a child is born, and, and the child might grow up a little bit, and maybe after about four or five years old, and start cursing. So if that child starts cursing, what would you do? You're going to correct that child, right? right. You're going to do the best you can to correct that child. That's the same thing we got to do with the baby we got to just correct them, but you don't judge a person, and you don't want to be around a person because they're making, they saying curse words. How are they going to know if you don't tell them? How are we going to, how does that person have a chance because they offend you? You should be over that already. You should be doing God's work and not worrying about being offended after you talk to that person. Maybe that person would change their way. I see that all the time in my day because I'm in a transit business in terms of buses. I see all kind of personalities every day gets on that bus. And don't you know that in a few cases I say, brother, sister, that offends me. Would you please 
not do that? I'm sorry. In most cases, you do that, but a lot of times, we don't even want to confront or face a person. That's all we want to do is judge them and say, you wrong, and you going to hell. So what hell can you put anybody? You got to remember, when you first came to God, I know when I first came to God, I came, I didn't have a suit on or anything else. I had what I had. So why are we judging people who don't have a suit to put on or some clothing that don't look Christian-like? They, they hadn't been a Christian. They don't know this. And then when they find out, you got to help them along the way. If you got something to give them, give it to them. Amen. Don't talk about them. Be there for them. That's what the church job is to do. Don't judge people. You out in the public or whatever, leave them folks alone. You see somebody, you see one of your brothers or sisters at the liquor store, what you going to do? You don't even know why they at the liquor store. Maybe the sto all the other stores was closed around and they had to go in that liquor store to get whatever they had to get. You shouldn't even blow your horn and say hello. You just, just pray for them and keep, walk, keep going. Leave them folks alone. Why make them feel bad about if they're in a liquor store or something? They ain't got to, I mean, I, I, you got to do what you got to do. You got a sick child at home. Well, uh, well the average thing ain't open, so you got to get it from somewhere. So don't judge me because I come out with a brown paper bag. Huh? Why, why should you? Don't judge me. Huh? So... You got to love me. So if you see me walking out of a liquor store, don't judge me. You don't know why I came out that liquor store. I might have a sick child at home and got to have some type of certain medicine or a certain cough drop or whatever. Don't judge me. Amen. Y'all going to still love me? Amen. I can hope so. So. We have, just have to remember, I, I, all joking aside, that there's people out there that's lost. And our job really is to be there as much as we possibly can. You can't make a person love God, but you can set the example. Amen. Y'all pray for me, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Remember years ago, the pastor was testifying that it was late and my mother needed something. Uh, I forgot what it was. It was late and the only thing that was open is years ago was the liquor store. And, and you know, he, he went in there, but the, the, he bought, I think he bought a Coke or something. I don't know what you did. Whatever you bought. And, and the, the man gave him a paper bag to put it in. <laughs> he said he took the paper bag out and walked out the liquor store. Like <laughs> so everybody could see what he had in his hand. <laughs> Just in case. Hey, <laughs> man, the Bible says don't let your good be evil spoken. <laughs> but did we enjoy uh, Deacon Martin? Let us love one another. Judge not, lest ye will be judged. That just simply means when you judge other folks, when your time to mess up comes. I said when your time to mess up comes. Let me say that again. When you judge other people for what they do, when your time to mess up comes, you will be judged at the same measure that you judge others. That's why I don't judge nobody. I, 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 I don't say nothing wrong to nobody. I don't, you know, I, I say a good word to everybody. Amen? Because when my time comes, I need your prayers. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Amen. How many of you know that whatever you need done, Jesus will do it? And this song simply says, Jesus will. Let's say amen for Sister Jane Little Johnson.
Turn towards your neighbor and say, Jesus will. Come on, tell three people, Jesus will. He'll fight your battle. He'll heal your body. He'll make ways out of no way. Open your mouth and say, Jesus will. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. Open up your mouth, everybody in this building, and say, Jesus will. Come on, say it again. Jesus will. Make ways out of no ways. Jesus will. He'll restore your relationship with your family. Jesus will. If you don't believe it, try Jesus. Have you tried Jesus? Somebody ought to say, he's all right. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands in the sanctuary. Glory, glory. Mother Roland, I know that you know that Jesus will be a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And our pastor always says, bread when you're hungry, water when you're thirsty. Everything you need. Hallelujah. Jesus is. He says there will be a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. Salvation is here right now. Right now. Deliverance is here right now. And I dare anyone up anyone in this room, if you need deliverance, if you need a miracle, if you just lift up your hands and, and, and just accept it, lift up your hands high, the miracles are falling from heaven right now. We've, we, the Holy Spirit is here because we brought him here. I lift my hands, bow my knee, and worship at your throne. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Right now. Anybody need a right now blessing, a right now miracle? Accept it by faith. He's here. He's delivering. He's restoring. Right now. Right now. Everybody sing. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Right now, step out on faith. We lift our hands and we bow our knees and worship at your throne. Oh, I need you, Lord. 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 Right now. Clap your hands all over the sanctuary. I need everyone to stand. Everyone to stand. I need everyone to stand. I need everyone to stand. And I need you to lay your hands on your person next to you. And you're going to pray for them. Whatever they need, you need to pray. Open up your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. If no one's touching you, walk to somebody and you don't know what to say. They say, Lord, have your way in their life. That's all you need to say. Walk to someone and touch them. Lord, have your way in your, their life. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy now. We lose hope. We lose power. We lose deliverance. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Now, everybody clap those hands in victory. And look at them and tell them it's done. It's done by faith. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's done by faith. In the name of Jesus. 
whatever it is, whatever the devil planned, God has just blocked it. It is done. Somebody shout yay. Say yes. 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 I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. Lift up your hands and worship. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now, right now, right now. I lift my hands, bow my knees, and worship at your throne I need you Lord I need you Lord By faith, declare it done. By faith, declare it done. In the name of Jesus, declare it done. You can relax because God is in control. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, you're in control. Lord, you have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for working it out. We thank you, Lord, for working it out. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. No weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work sing it no weapon form against shall prosper it won't work ah, say, I know God will do what he said he would do you just stand by his word he will come through God what he said you just stand by his word and he will come through no weapon form come on in Isaac this man was in ICU a couple of days ago and he's walking in the church, was hit by a car in ICU. Won't God do it? Lift your hands up high, Isaac. Won't God do it? Yes, sir. One more verse. I know God will do what he said he would do. You just stand by his word. Stop it right there. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Given it shall be given unto you good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all the thine increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats burst out with new wine. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. All nations, brothers and sisters, it is offering time. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for your people right now. Exponentially bless them. Take them higher. Increase their territory in the name of Jesus. 
Whatever they're giving today, Lord, give back to them according to your word, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In every field of human endeavor they embark upon, you bless it, you anoint it. Bless their offerings today, Lord, they're giving back to your kingdom, giving back to your church, giving back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Remain standing. Remain standing. Our head usher is coming to give you directions. For those of you that would like to give via credit card or debit card, we have a kiosk. Sister April, raise your hand. So, so over there, you have a debit or credit card. So you, those of you that are worshiping online, amen, turn to the website, www.ankojic.org. Find that donate button. We'll gladly receive your gift. Amen. Please hear our usher, Sister Jennifer Powell. Would everyone please remain standing, face the outer wall. Starting on the outside out, you come forward with your offering, and then my inside out will come forward in leadership of the usher on the rear. Thank you. God bless you. Come, come. Let's stay in worship. Stay in the worship mode. Isaac, come here. I will do a new thing. Brother Isaac, come here. Brother Isaac, come here. giving while we're giving someone bring up mother Roland someone escort up mother Roland the pastor is laying hands right now pastor's laying hands sister Washington amen our ushers are moving hallelujah it's praying time it's praying time they're here they're here new thing sister Washington stay right there let mother Roland go ahead of you though there you go. The pastor is laying hands. Hallelujah. Elder Asbury, go down. Those of you that have a seed offering. Those of you that have a seed offering. A stewardship campaign donation. Come now. Elder Asbury will lay hands on you. An offering above and beyond your tithing. Going towards the paying off of this building. Come, come. Hallelujah. You have a seed offering. Stewardship campaign donation. Come. Hallelujah. The pastor's praying. Prayers. Prayer is going on. Healing is going on. Thing in you. I will do. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. In you. with your gift. God's going to bless you exponentially. Come. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Nothing shall be denied. Yeah, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone lift your hands and point your arms toward these great people. God has healed. God has delivered. God is setting free. Say Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is moving even in the offering. Hallelujah. I need everybody to put your hands together and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed ministry leaders ministry leaders come ministry leaders come now come now ministry leaders come 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 praise the lord all ministry leaders or designees, please come forth at this particular time. Take the mic, speak distinctly into it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm representing the Mother's Board, and our president is Mother Shirley Elmore. Amen. And we have a full report. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. And representing the Missionary Circle, happy to see our president here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we have a full report. Amen, all nations. I'm here representing hospitality, where our president is the fearless Deborah Cooper and the all nations finest hospitality. We have a full report. Hello, I'm representing the greeters, which is also the finest greeters in Sacramento. Am I greeters? I'm a greeter. We have a full report. <laughs> Where are my greeters at? <laughs> uh, I have them representing the deaconesses, and we have a full report. All oh, nations, extra finest usher board, full report. I'm representing the Children's Church, and our president is Mother Stovall. I don't see her here in her absence. We have a full report. Deacons board, full report. Men's department, full report. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our observations. Amen. Opportunities for service. The homegoing service. The homegoing service for our own Deacon Arnold Tyson. Amen. Let's give Deacon Arnold Tyson a great big round of applause for a life well lived. <laughs> will be this Tuesday, August 28th, this Tuesday at 11 a.m. We are asking that all All Nations members be in attendance that can and all come wearing black. Amen. Choir be here at least by 1030. Amen. We greatly appreciate your regular financial support, but don't forget our five-month pledge, which is coming to an end. Amen. Our sheetrock donation. Amen. To the East Campus restoration. We have asked over the last five months that 100 members Amen. 100 adult members. Amen. The children can give what they want to give uh, for $100. Amen. And please uh, submit your, your donation, if you can, by September 9th. Amen. That's the second Sunday in September. We're going to sheetrock. We're remodeling the next door building, and we're going to do a wonderful job. Amen. Our annual celebration for our pastor and first lady is Sunday, November 4th. Our appreciation. Amen. Progressive Church of Ghana Christ is our guest, Pastor Superintendent and Administrative Assistant Benny L. Tolliver is going to be our guest speaker, and Progressive is going to be our guest church. Please continue to use the monthly installment plan to remit your $125 donation towards that effort. Amen. And we are going uh, to their appreciation. Amen. And uh, we'll give you the date on that. Amen, and I believe some, a lot of you have it, and we're gonna be going over there, amen, uh, at four o'clock, amen. So we're gonna go to Progressive, amen, and celebrate their appreciation, and pastor, they're gonna come to us, amen. Let's give God a hand praise. We're gonna have a wonderful time in ministry. Please support our children's ministry with their community outreach efforts of the Operation Shoebox, which serves underprivileged youth in the Oak Park. The kids are making shoeboxes, and they're putting in crayons, soap, dishes, combs, brushes, deodorant, uh, travel tissue, stuffed animal, and, and an encouraging word, and many more things. Amen. Let's say amen for our youth at this time in that effort. September is back to school month. Amen. And, and, and since it's back to school month, we're praying for all our students to do well in school. Um, we're asking, we're admonishing everyone here to at least come to a Sunday school and one Bible study a week. Amen. Come to Sunday school and one Bible study a week. We have Bible study Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. 
We have Bible study again Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we have Bible study, amen, on Thursday nights at 6.30. Amen. It is, uh, we would, the pastors endeavored that all of us go to one Bible study during that week. Can the church say amen? amen. At this time, we're going to give you back in hands of, of the conductors of service. Just say amen. Praise the Lord. At this particular time, the men's chorus is coming before you. Praise the Lord with a selection. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The men's chorus. Let me hear everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Let me hear you say Jesus. Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'd love to call on the name of Jesus. 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 Because I found out that there's power, power. in that name. In that name. There is joy, joy. in that name. In that name. There's peace, peace. in that name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well. Everything you need. Everything you need, Everything you need yeah, yeah. is all in the name of Jesus. Mm. You know one other little reason why I love that name is because all my life, all my life, all my life, all my life, I've been taught to honor, well, respect, and reverence yeah. the name of Jesus. Mm. For there is no other name, no other name. I said. There is no other name. 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 Under heaven, mm. or by mm. men, can mm. be saved. I'd like to go way back and sing an old song and tell you what he did for me. This is what he did. He, he, he picked me up and he turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. It was Jesus. I know it was Jesus. I know it was the Lord.
chorus of all nations church of god in christ come on put your hands together for them i know it was jesus i know it was the lord amen we're going to ask everyone that's able to stand if you're able to stand please stand as dr pickett eloquently says it's preaching time amen it's time for the word of the lord it is impossible to please the Lord without faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing cometh by the word of the Lord. How can we hear without the preacher? Look at your name and say, it's preaching time. How can he preach unless he has been sent? Please welcome the men's department president, the one and only Elder Michael Asbury. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity in the land of the living today. You blessed us early this morning at 7 o'clock, Lord, as we made our way directly to you. You didn't let us down, Lord. You've been showing out all afternoon. When the enemy came in, you rushed him out like a mighty flood. And Lord, you blessed, you healed, and you've delivered. Now, Lord, send your word in that with fire of the Holy Ghost that we might lift your name up from the earth once again. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Please have your seats. Please be seated. I will not be before you long. We have had church early this morning, all day this morning. Where's Deacon Anderson? He left? Uh-huh, he stepped out. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, we were here early this morning ushering in the Spirit of the Lord. And you know what? He's never let us down. He has not once let us down. Amen? What we want to do is remember the Tyson family. Give them a phone call. Um, keep them in your prayers. A true soldier, I served with him for over 20 years. And he's gone on to rest from labor to rest. We all got to go that way. So we have an opportunity to get it right. I learned a lot of things from the, my brother. He was an upstanding man, and he was the example before his sons. And we talked about it, and he wanted to be that way. So it just didn't happen by chance. But he deliberately lived that lifestyle, and he loved the Lord. Amen? Amen. Give an honor to my great pastor, Superintendent Itasca Holland Sr., <laughs> to his lovely wife, Mother Julia Hollins, my parents in the gospel, to the quorum, our assistant pastor, to the quorum of elders and ministers, to Elder Bean, to all the mothers, to all, everybody here. You're somebody special in God's eyes. Amen? Our subject today is time out. Time out. And the righteous judge. Time out. And the righteous judge. When the Lord gave it to me, I was thinking about Deacon Tyson. Giving honor to my family sitting over there. It's, 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 isn't it something when you see your, your children have children? This is my first, so it, it is, it is. It, and it's, it's weird because you get to see everything that was in them come out. And you know everything that they did to me, they're going to do to them too. So I'm waiting to see that. It's coming back. Yeah, yeah all, everything. Uh huh. Get ready for it. But I, the Lord gave it to me, and I was thinking about uh, Deacon Tyson when, when this came out. But let me read the scriptures. I'm going to read the scriptures. Uh, verses 1 through 8 of chapter 7 in Matthew. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in your own eye? Or how wilt thou say unto thy brother, let me pull it out, the mote out of thine eye? And behold, the beam or beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen? Take your seats. Three quick points, and I'm going to sit down, because I'm really not a preacher. I'm a teacher. I like learning. And it's something that we all need to get. You know, the Every time I think about judge not, least ye be judged, the first thought comes to mind is Enoch. Enoch had a conversation so great. God just started walking and talking to Enoch. And then the next thing you found out, Enoch was translated into heaven. What that tells me is Enoch didn't judge nobody. In that conversation he held with God, it had to be so good no backbiting, no murmuring, no complaining, no finger pointing. But God said, boy, come on up here with me. You don't need to be down here. See, when your conversation gets so good with God, God just translates you. You go to a different place. Paul said he didn't know if he was in second, first, second, or third heaven. Because when God starts speaking to you and your conversation gets good enough, he'll take you places nobody else can go but you and him. And you have to remember that God loves us so much. He said, in, Jesus said, in my father's house is many mansions. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if it wasn't so, I wouldn't be telling you this. He's not a man that he would lie. And he ain't talking about places. He's talking about heavenly 
places. Don't you know you have heavenly places in your heart? And I ain't talking about here. I'm talking about right here. The only part of us that's saved is our heart. And you have heavenly places that you can go into. The Bible says you can go into your secret closet and pray. And he'll reward you openly. You don't understand how many secret places you have in your heart to use if you just remember your brother or your sister is not your problem. They belong to God just like you belong to God. I belong to God. You know, Peter said, you know, what are we going to do about John? And Jesus said, what is it to you? If he tarry till I come back, what is it to you? What does that have to do with your walk? We're supposed to be helpers one of another. We're going to have to get to the point where we stop looking cockeyed at each other and remember, it's not my walk, it's your walk. If I can help you, I'll help you. But I'm not going to condemn you. If I can't say something good, I'm not going to say nothing at all. The battle is not given to the strong, neither to the swift, but it's to that one that endures to the end. See, when, when Jesus, this is all in red, when Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you, you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Don't you know you could walk yourself right into heaven? I'm not saying it's impossible, nor am I saying it's possible. But if you didn't judge nobody else from today on, you could walk yourselves right on into heaven, according to this scripture right here. That's the first point. Judgment is something we're not capable of doing. I'm going to say that again. See, we read in the scriptures, see, search the scriptures. In them, you, you think you have eternal life, but the ends thereof is, uh-huh, death. The letter kill it, but the spirit make it alive. So I read something, but did you get an understanding of what you just read? Now you got to get in the spirit. You got to call on the name of the Lord and let him reveal what you just read. That's what they call educated fools. Without a revelation, you can't understand what God is saying to you. It is so clear, we add to it. Then we take away from it. And he already said in Revelations, don't add to it and don't take away from it. But first thing we do is we add to it. We have to know, stop putting a stumbling block in front of your sister or your brother. Just love them because in a moment's time, it's going to be over. The older I get, the more I think about getting out of here. Sometimes it's just an ankle. Sometimes it's an ankle, a neck, back, shoulder. Things just keep changing because the body is dying, but the spirit is gaining. It's getting stronger. It's getting closer to God, but the body is dying. And you have to remember that God controls everything. He's able to destroy the body, the soul, and the spirit. But he's also able to deliver and heal, set free. Second point. Well, this is still the first point. Because a lot of times we see the dust that's in one of our brother's or sister's eyes and we don't think about the two by four that we're looking blurrily with at them. They got a little bit of dust in their eye and you want to clean it out. But you're not seeing correctly because you got a two by four in yours. And you trying to tell them what you think the scriptures are saying. But the scriptures are very clear. Because when the word became flesh and dwelt among us, he showed us all the things that we need to do. Jesus, you can't be going over there with the wine hose. Why not? Jesus, what are you doing over there with them six people, the lepers? I'm going to heal them. Jesus, it's a storm raging. Don't you care that we're going to perish? Peace. Be still. 
See, we don't want to, we thought it not robbery to be, see, the scriptures say something, but if you don't mean it, if you don't live it, then stop talking about it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And he made of himself no reputation, but he thought it not robbery to be equal. See, we got to start living this thing because application is going to come knocking at your door. You keep talking it, and you're going to get challenged with it. And sometimes you just got to sit down and just shut up. Don't say nothing. If you will just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, victory, I don't mean out of fear. I mean out of reverence for the power of God. Not because I'm afraid I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet because if I can't say something good, I'm not going to say nothing at all because the power of death and life is in my tongue. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. It's what's in your heart that comes out of your mouth. And when you're afraid, the devil hears your fear. So be careful what comes out of your mouth. Think about what you're doing. You know, Peter was the quick gun, you know, the one that pulled his razor when they came to get Jesus and cut the man's ear off. But after a while, the Lord showed Peter a vision, a sheet of four-footed animals coming down, you know, and told him to take and eat. And he said, no, I ain't going to eat nothing unclean. And God gave him a revelation and said, what I send down to you, don't you call unclean. But what happened was, y'all got to catch this. Peter said he pondered in his heart. He meditated on what he was going to say before he got to where the Lord was sending him. That same quick gun held his peace and meditated and rehearsed what he was going to say before he came to where the Lord sent him. See, we got to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're not as good as we should be right now but if we just keep being faithful, keep coming to the house of the Lord, what he's going to do is he's going to give it to you when you get it. As the scriptures have said, out of your belly will flow rivers of, you'll start speaking life to everything you come in contact with. You have to know that God has given you the power to do that. All authority belongs to Jesus. There is no other name which... Men can be saved here, in the heavens, or anywhere else other than the name of Jesus. But he's given us the power to deal with everything we're faced with. And all we have to do is do it his way. So when you look at, he says in verse 5, don't be a hypocrite. First cast out the beam of your own eye, and then you shall see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's I, you that are spiritual, restore such a one if you see him overtaken in a fault with the spirit of meekness. In other words, you come quietly, not boasting, not loud, not rebuking, but in love. And let the spirit lead you. And if the Lord don't give you anything, send them to your pastor or one of the elders or one of the missionaries or mothers. Somebody mature. When we have these cat fights, what are we fighting about? Nothing. Nothing that you're going to take to eternity. I got a brand new Cadillac, so what? When you leave here, it's still going to be a Cadillac. That's right. Somebody else is going to have it. Everything we see is temporary. And I'm not saying don't enjoy it. If you have your eye on a six-bedroom house, three-bathroom, get it. But remember, you can only sleep in one bedroom at a time. I don't care how many toilets you got, you can only use one at a time. I don't care how many suits you got, you can only effectively wear one at a time. Think about what we're doing and don't get caught up into this stuff. There was a time when we wore medallions and dashikis and it didn't cost nothing. And everything was common. You know why? Because we were just glad to be included in the 60s. We asked for inclusion, better schools, better jobs. All these things were given to us, but what we didn't see coming was all the other stuff, the drugs and the envy and the jealousy and the rebukes and all the other things. See, these things are not godly. 
And we have to get back to what we're doing. I don't care what Donald Trump is doing. We've been talking about this. Do you see that God is in control? You see what God is doing? He's getting ready to make a change, and nobody can stop it. God is in control. You hear Elder Holland say it all the time, relax. God is in control. When he gets tired of it, he's going to make a move. He did it to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel's time. God does not play. When he gets tired of something, he'll make a change. Point number two. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and rend you. Why do you go and double check with an unbeliever when the Lord has given you something to do? They don't understand it. They can't see it. It's a spiritual discernment. Why would you go back to the world and speak to the world about something spiritual? And as soon as they get mad, they're going to blame you. This is not something new. This has been going on. We have to, when God tells you to do something, go do it. That's how your faith is increased. You want your faith increased? Do it. Yeah, I know it don't sound good, but do it. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. Who are the called according to, it don't seem good at the time. And sometimes, I, a whole lot of times recently and times to come, I'm going to keep my mouth closed. Because things are going at a higher level now. The enemy knows he has to come to another level now. And we're battling at a different level because I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm closer to the grave than I am to birth. Well, let me say I'm halfway there. Another 60 years, I'll be there. So at 120, I'll be ready to go. So what we want to do is we want to remember that people out in the world are testing you. They want to see how serious you are. When they're trying you, it's only, Peter said it like this, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials. It's just a test. And if the righteous scarcely make it in, Where's the sinner going to be found trying to get you to show them why you going? Give them a testimony if you ain't got nothing else. But don't get angry at them. Don't yell. You know, some people show their anger because they don't have an answer. Rather than saying, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. If you ask me something and I don't know, I'm going to say, let's table this and let me go check it out. I'll get back to you. And if I have to, I'll go to whoever. Pastor, Elder Ike, one of these elders, ministers, mother, if I have to. But we'll get your answer. Because when you ask me a question that I can't answer, you helping me. Now, I'm finding out something I didn't know. Then the scripture comes to life and it says, iron sharpened it. And so does the countenance of a friend. Y'all missed out this morning. Y'all wasn't here to hear the friendship message from Pastor Hollins this morning. Talking about how you need to be friendly if you want to have friends. And in order for us to live together, listen, we're going to get closer than y'all think. Mr. Trump, the Lord, the bar on po- political arenas in this country. I don't think it'll ever be raised again because it's based on money. You remember, their God is mammon. You can't serve God and mammon. The ones that are falling are falling behind Mammon. Look at them. They're falling behind money. And then they have the, the, (laughs) they're saying the truth ain't the truth. Yeah, the truth is still the truth. Jesus Christ is still the way, the life, and the truth. And we still have to live up to the standard that he set before us. But they're lowering it because of their mammon or money. Now, some of y'all are going to fall. I remember the Lord gave me a vision one time, and I seen it, it was on, on rapture day when all the people in the bank are going to be taken to, to save, and the bank vault's going to be open. Some sinners are going to be running in there talking about, woo, the vaults is open and the money is there. And they're going to be paying attention that all the saints are gone. 
And money's not going to do you no good because you wasn't ready. See, we got to get ready. Third point, and we getting out of here. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receive it. Is this in red? Who's, who's talking? Okay, the only way we can get to heaven is through Jesus. And he said, for everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. But some of us won't even open the door. Some of us will not seek. Some won't even ask. It's time out for us, saints, to be couch saints. And we have to start opening our mouth. You know, in order to receive salvation, what do you have to do? You have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that God raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, and because I make this confession, I'm saved. Now, with the mouth, confession is made because of the belief that's in your heart. Now, to everyone that asketh, he gives deliverance to. So when, you, when scripture said, ask, what is the question? He's already said, I'm going to give you your answer. Whatever your question is, Jesus has made a promise, it's going to be answered. And he said, if you seek something, a job, a spouse, a new car, whatever it might be, when you believe, wait on it. That's the part we don't want. Let me say that one more time. Wait on it. My heart gets discouraged when I hear them one-year, two-year waits. And, and I've been hit with them because I know that's not what I want to do. But you know what I do? Keep my mouth closed and wait. Because God has already promised, if I seek, I'm going to find it. And if I knock on his door, he's going to open it. Everything that you need as a believer, you have to know that God has already given it to you. But once you get it, you got to be content with the things that you have. In other words, take care of what you got in order to get some more. But if you can't take care of what you got, why would you be asking for more? My house used to be just right for us, a bedroom for everybody, one for each child, me and my wife. Now it's just me, and I have to take care of it. And it's not a job. It's because I want to. You have to know that when we leave here, somebody else is going to get your stuff. <laughs> so enjoy the stuff. But don't let the stuff keep you from coming to church. Don't let the stuff keep you from trying to bless somebody else. You know, when you have an overabundance of stuff, you know what God is telling you? Share it with some of the other saints. See, you think when, we, when you hear the scripture say, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, press down, shake it together, run off. No, it's talking about that stuff in your garage, the stuff that's in your closet, the stuff under your bed. All that stuff in the jewelry box that you can't wear, you only got 10 fingers, and two of them is thumbs, so you need to share some of that stuff because it's not doing you any good. Now, when you give it, he's, gonna, he's already made a promise. He's going to give it back to you, good measure, and he's going to press it down, shake it together, and running over, you're going to have more stuff. So you're going to have to give it out again. When you give... It will be given back to you. It's more blessed to give. We have to get this in. You control your destiny. Give me two more minutes and I'm sitting down. We control our destiny financially. Because if you give, there's promises throughout the Bible that God has already promised to give it back. And then he promised to rebuke the IRS on behalf of you. So, the devourer can't come and take the stuff from you. Now, your salvation is based upon your coming and hearing the word. Faith cometh by and hearing by. 
How can you hear without hearing the word? You, well, I can do it at home. No, you can't because you don't know when that tape was made. It may be two or three years old. Even if it's a week old, it's old now. You want to get the hot stuff, fresh. Let God's fresh anointing fall down. You can't get it at home. You have to be able to receive it. I can't describe to you what happened this morning. You have to know, brothers and sisters, this thing is real. You know, and the older you get, you'll be where I am someday, but I'm trying to get you there now so that you can receive the blessings of God. What is your heart's desire? We're standing. What is your heart's desire? What, do, what does your heart desire? What does your heart want? All you have to do is believe it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that how seek him? How do you seek him? Can you do diligency just any old time? You have to have a determined, made-up mind. And when you have a made-up mind, your reward is waiting on you. We have to know we have the greatest preachers in Sacramento. And I'm glad to be on staff as a teacher because I love learning. And every time the Lord gives me something, I'm going to share it. But you have to share what you're getting. And you have to step up and take a post and share it with the rest of the congregation. We overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb. And the words of, we need to hear your testimony. You're part of this body. You need to stand up and be heard. Somebody's going to be changed just by your testimony. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters, especially for the Tyson family, Lord. Allow the tears to flow and the pain to be there, Lord God, but strengthen them in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we ask by faith, everyone in this room, Lord God, give them the strength and the courage to step up, to speak loudly, Lord God, that questions may be answered, yokes may be destroyed, healing may come into them deliverance lord i claim it done by faith in jesus name amen i heard the pastor singing this we, we want to bless the man of god we don't want to leave we are here in this place we are waiting for moments like this Missionaries, elders, ministers, come to the altar. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, come do your will. We are changed as you move in our midst. If you have an issue, you need the Lord to work out something that's in your spirit. You need to come now. The, the anointing's high. The men and women of God are here to pray with you. Come. Come now. Come. Have your way in this place, whatever it is. Come now. Come now. Holy Spirit, come do your will. Come, man. Come, woman. Let the men of God, let the women of God pray for you as you move in our midst. We are changed. We are changed. Come, come. We are changed as you move. In our midst, come, come. Let the men of God pray for you. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed as you move. In our midst. Come, come, come. We are changed. We are changed. Come. Stretch across. We are changed as you move. In our midst. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed as you move. 
in our midst. We are here in this place. We're just waiting for moments like this. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, come do your will. We are changed as you were in our midst. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed as you were in our midst. We are changed. We are changed. We are changed as you move. Amen. Hallelujah. In our midst. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. We are Hallelujah. You won't leave here like you came. In Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick or lame. For the power. with me everybody say yes 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 deacons deacons come yes we're about to bless the man of god yes. i need everyone to clap your hands and praise god in this place the word of god has been preached the word of God has been taught. We cannot pay for the gospel. But what we can do is bless the messenger to continue to live their lives circumspectly and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost that they continue to teach to us and preach to us the word of life. Let's get the best offering you can. Elder Michael Asbury has preached out of his heart this afternoon. And we are all have been truly blessed. Hallelujah. Come with your gift. Dear Lord, I pray for your people right now that are putting a gift together in their hands. Some are already coming. Bless them, Lord. Give back to them 30, 60, 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come with your gifts at this time. Come with your gifts. Come. Come with your gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything going to be all right. Oh, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I come with your gift. Come with your gift. Bless the man of God. Be a blessing to the man of God. Be all right. When you give a gift in the name of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. Yes, the Holy Ghost told me. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, the Holy Ghost told me. Is everyone given? We'll wait on you. Has everyone given? That is desire to give. Told me everything's gonna be all right. Thank you, deacons. Hallelujah. Be all right. Be all. Listen, if there's someone here 
that is not saved and you know the road that you're walking on is not the road you need to be. You want your sins forgiven. Amen. I want you to raise your hand. I'll pray for you right where you sit. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone's head bowed, every eyes closed. Lord, I pray the Lord, that have those that have their hands up, that they become saved, that you save them, Lord. Fill them with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Bless them. Allow them to see you, God, in a way they've never seen you before. Allow them to continue to be mirrors that reflect your image. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone in this room, repeat after me. Dear Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for all the wrong that I've done. I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe Jesus died for my sins. And I believe that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus is alive. And I accept him into my heart. I thank you for, forgive, for forgiving me, Lord. I thank you for setting me free. I thank you for making me whole. My brothers and sisters, if you have prayed that prayer, the Bible says you are saved and on your way to heaven. Come on, clap your hands for the spirit of salvation. Clap your hands for the spirit of salvation. Look at someone next to you and tell them I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. And while you're praising them, we believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost is given to believers who ask for it. And do I have any believers in this house right now? If you believe it, say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me with your power. Lord, fill me with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I receive it and I accept it now. Clap your hands. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, amen. Do you have any? We're going to give you a hand to the pastor. Amen. He's going to take the service on. Let's say amen for the greatest pastor in the world, Superintendent Itasca Holland. Wow. Let's say praise God. Praise God. That we are not having time today. Amen. Did you enjoy that word? Amen. Three points in less than 20 minutes. We all understand the word. God bless all you wonderful people. Let me warn you, the devil is on the warpath. When, when a church starts to move forward and the word is being preached and people are praying, and you better watch out because the devil is coming right in the house of God. But we already know he's a liar. He's a loser. We got power. And if you don't have the power, you need to get that power. Am I right about it? Let's, let's merge together. Let's merge together. El Asbury preached a wonderful dynamic word today, as always. But we want to thank you for just being who you are. Sister Pam Washington, she has been deathly ill, but she's here now. She's here. In the house of God. Sometime, and, and, and God knows we miss Mother Roland. Mother Roland been ill, but she's here. She's, a, she's an old Kojic veteran. We, we know we're going to have some pain. I, I live with pain. I live with pain. You think I don't have no pain, but I got some pain. But it's just pain. I'll take it to heaven as far as it'll go. But I'm going to keep everything I got inside of me. Amen. I'm going straight to heaven with what I got inside. Before I get there, God will be going to change it anyway. Tell your neighbor, God going to change it. Don't hit that no more because, boy, woo, don't, hit, don't hit that organ in, anymore. Ah, Everybody stand on your feet. Let's give God a hand praise, everybody. For a few minutes, all Urshers, all Urshers, all Urshers, please meet the first lady in the back. She has a meeting. Hey, man, she wants you guys to attend. All Urshers, meet the first lady in the back. She's a smile on her face, so it's going to be all right. See, so all Urshers, let's, let's meet the first lady in the back. God bless you all. Remember, the homegoing service is this Tuesday. Amen. It's going to start on time at 11. So let's get here early. Choir members, musicians, let's please be here 
at 1030 ready to minister. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness. Lord, it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. And without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Lord, we thank you for the move of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit, your healing virtue, and saving and filling us with the Holy Ghost. Allow us, Lord, to go home safely and bring us all back at the appointed hour. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. So what I'm going to do is have them already hook it up so when I come on Tuesday it's already...